Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to the latest episode of our entertainment show. As you know, as a special feature of inter our entertainment show, every week we look at cult classic movies in the Into the Vault series. These are movies from different genres throughout the decades, whether it's a 60s Western movie, a 70s or 80s detective uh, police sort of movie, maybe it's a 90s sci-fi futuristic thriller, maybe it's the noughties, are we, we're talking about horror or horror movies and maybe it's uh, back into the early 2020s and it's maybe futuristic movies whatever the decade whatever the genre if it's a cult classic and it stands the test of time we look into it and our special feature on this week of our entertainment show comes from the sport of basketball it's probably one of the most renowned uh, basketball movies of its time no we're not talking about space jam we're talking a bit about before uh, space jam and michael jordan we're going back to the year 1992 it's the film white men can't jump it stars the one and only wesley snipes woody harrelson Rosie Perez and our special guest this evening, Tyra Ferl, 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 who plays the role of uh, Rhonda Dean, the wife of Sydney Dean, who's played by Wesley Snipes. And first of all, Tyra, an absolute pleasure to have you on. A special year for White Men Can Jump, 30 years since its uh, production. And I do believe rumours going around and shooting that another movie is uh, just around the corner. It's to filming uh, uh, 30 years later. Yes, that's what I hear as well. And uh, Tyra, for you, white men can't jump. How did the opportunity come about for you to get involved in that movie? Was it a rigorous audition process? Were you recommended by your talent agent? Or how did the opportunity come about for you to get involved in white men can't jump? Yes, good question. Um, it was an audition. It was uh, My agent called me in for it and I went in and met with Ron Shelton. I was a fan of his because I loved his movie Bull Durham and I loved Susan Sarandon. I was a fan of hers from Thelma and Louise and I really loved her in Bull Durham because of her sexiness, her power and her control. So I was a fan. So when I heard White Men Can't Jump it was coming out, I wanted to meet Ron Shelton. Ron Shelton was the one that I really wanted to meet. And then when I heard that Wesley was in it, I had to do it. He was the hottest thing going at the time. And we had just completed um, uh, Jungle Fever together. So uh, it was, I wanted to be next to him and show black love in this film when I read the script. And Tyra, in terms of white men can jump, most of the filming was done in Los Angeles, in California, and uh, Venice, sort of beach as well. Uh, in terms of that shoot and that location, for in terms of that movie, were most of your sets done off shoot on terms of on site locations? I don't really, was there much of studio work in, in terms of the white men can jump at all? Uh, no, it was all on location. The beach, uh, you know, we had a hotel uh, apartment building, so it was all on location. There, I think there was some studio work, but basically on set. But let me start. Can I tell you, I wrote something for you because I'm much better with the script and I want your audience to hear this. Is that okay? Please do. Please do. Okay. What I wrote for you, because I'm much better with the script, and I want your audience to, to know, White Men Can't Jump is an iconic film because of the cultural subject matter and the window it provided into the world of sports. African-American men dominate this game. And before this film, no one knew anything about what they said to each other and how they communicate with each other and how they do what they do. In a world that simultaneously denigrated and subjugated black men, this was a world where they could dominate and be themselves. And this important film shared that with the world. This film underscores the boundless limits of human potential for black men while they remained inside the four corners of a basketball court. They could be free, they could excel, and they could dominate. But the film was not an accident. It came as a result of great writing, brilliant character development, and directing a spectacular ensemble cast of actors and athletes, and it will never be re uh, replicated. 
And I wanted to say that because, and the other reason I did it was after doing Boys in the Hood and Jungle Fever and reading this script, I wanted to show black love because at that particular time, there weren't many films with black men and women loving and supporting each other. So that was very important to me. On that note, a powerful speech, uh, Tyra, in terms of summarizing uh, white men can't jump. And doing my research about the movie in terms of the basketball element of it now, that uh, I do believe Detroit uh, Pistons ex center Bob Lehner was uh, hired for the movie in terms of uh, teaching Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson in terms of their basketball skills. And uh, apparently they got so good at, in terms of basketball that they were able to pay, play on a college level. Some people said that they trained six, seven days a week on the basketball court in, in terms of developing their skills. That is the passion of an actor. You know, we, it's about perfection. And what's, what's so great about the casting is, um, who we were and what we brought to those roles, you know? So yeah, the guys were great. I loved watching them, yeah. Yeah, and in terms of obviously the gimmick uh, in terms of the movie is Billy Hoyle, Woody Har Harrelson's character can't uh, sort of dunk, but obviously he's problems in his own sort of uh, personal life in, in terms of gangsters being after him and sort of stuff like that. And obviously you have the strong bonds uh, then between yourself and uh, Sydney as well. But the two guys are hustlers. They're like pool sharks in terms of... Uh, their, their basketball skills. And did you actually feel that uh, between takes that they're really enjoying the scenes that they were in, in terms of the basketball? Or were they having fun as well? Oh my God, it was one big party on the set. I mean, these guys, even in the rehearsals, you know, when we first started to read the script, we were in this big warehouse and everyone read their lines. We laughed, we talked, um, and uh, it was just one big party. It, the guys had so much fun. There was a lot of freedom and uh, and it was just one of the best um, pieces of work I've, I've done so far. I enjoyed that movie. And the fact that I wanted it so desperately for black love because he showed he loved his family and he was doing everything he could to support the family. So, oh, it was a fun movie. And I loved working with Wesley. When I look into his eyes, all I saw was the truth you know, and he was always clear and there 100%. And I have pictures that no one else has because there were scenes that were cut from the film. And this is okay. black, there was black love. I don't know if you can see that. And that was, a, see that. that was a scene in the kitchen. And this one here on our date night when he won. And there's so many more that only I have. <laughs> okay. And uh, Tyra, in terms of the movie as well, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Charlie Sheen was supposed to be originally cast in Woody Harrelson's uh, role, but he turned it down because he said uh, he didn't enjoy the sport of basketball <laughs> and if it were only baseball, well, if it was a baseball movie, then he would have signed up for it in terms of that. And uh, Denzel Washington was originally uh, the director's line to play the Wesley Snipes character. But the chemistry between Wesley and Woody, it really made that sort of movie. It, it's hard to imagine Charlie Sheen and Denzel Washington having the same sort of chemistry. Oh, yeah, exactly. I worked with uh, Denzel Washington in a film called Mighty Quinn. So I know what that's like. But Woody, oh, Woody is so free and real in the moment. And, you know, I can't see Sheen playing that because white men can't jump, you know what I'm saying? And that's what he was trying to tell you. <laughs> but Woody had these spring shoes on and he was so into it. And there are a few that can. And so uh, Woody was one of those white men who could jump. And some intriguing sort of guest stars, actually Gary Payton, a famous Seattle Supersonics and uh, renowned basketball star, had an uncredited role in the movie even before his time in the, the NBA as well. So uh, in terms of a future Hall of Famer actually uh, appeared uh, in White Man Can't Jump. And uh, I do believe a, a stat we found out about the movie was that there were 65 basketball shots in the movie, 55 were made and only 10 were missed entire throughout the movie. So in terms of that shooting efficiency uh, and in terms of stunts, in terms of 
perfecting the sort of sport that really showed that the level and desire and hunger Wesley and Woody had for the movie. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And you know, Ron Shelton was wonderful. He gave us so much freedom. And what I love about movies back in the day in the 90s when I was working, it was always about a collaboration. My audition was so important. It's what happens behind the scene where the magic really happens. When I met Ron Shelton, I said to him, listen, Ron, if you don't choose me because people like Halle Berry, Angela Bassett, everybody was coming through that door for that role. And I did say to Ron Shelton, we talked positive politics, because when you go into a room, the director needs to know he can relate to you. They need to know who you are. So when it's time to go into the audition, you just glide right into it. And the collaboration, I did say to him at the end of my audition, I said, look, you may not choose me, but please choose a sister an African-American woman that looks African-American with a full nose and full lips and natural hair to match him because so many times we see white looking uh, back in the day, uh, black women loving our men on screen, which doesn't take anything away from the lighter complexion uh, uh, women, but I hadn't seen myself loving a beautiful black man like, uh, Wesley. So I did say that to him. And I said, if you don't choose me, please choose someone because sisters like me need to see the black love on screen. And he heard me and, you know, he had to wait. I had to meet with Wesley. And when I met Wesley, the first thing he said to me, he goes, oh, I hear you are wonderful in Boys in the Hood because it hadn't come out yet. So I was just stacking up all my movies and this one I wanted. And believe you me, it was a manifestation because that's the way my life has always gone. I decide no more one-liners, I want paragraphs. No more paragraphs, I want to lead. No more of that, I want to be a regular. No more of that, I want to be featured. And surely enough, when the heart and the mind connects, the universe will answer. <laughs> and I suppose, Tyra, in terms of its production, we mentioned offshot shot location, shooting in basketball courts, shooting in beaches, obviously production wise, obviously that cost, but it generated 90.8 million in terms of uh, it, in terms of box office. It got nominated for uh, Oscars and Academy Awards. Woody Harrison was uh, up, up for that in terms of his role in it. Uh, in terms of white men can't jump, it sort of took off because it took on an area that people were so intrigued about, the whole area of playing basketball in the streets, uh, in the, the mixes and in terms of the camaraderie. It hadn't sort of been touched before in terms of that whole sort of subject. And do you, are, is it surprise you that the level that it sort of for a production that was low budget in, in, in certain areas that it shot the scales fairly quickly. No, it's because what I read to you in the beginning, if you use that, that's what I'm trying to tell you is that it's iconic because of so people, these brothers are always playing on the court where they're free and they're having a great time and they one up each other. And so it was just letting the, the audience in on what our brothers go through every day on the court and even professional uh, basketball. So it was an insight and letting the audience in. And I knew it was gonna be iconic because there was a point when the guys were having so much fun on screen during the rehearsals using the N word. And I had to tell them uh, that if they're gonna use that word, which hurts me deeply, then they need to let Woody use that word and tell him why he can't use that word. Because once this is in the can, politically, we need to wipe it out. And I told the guys, if you can really act, and that's what we are, actors, then I want you to portray what you say in that word and have fun with it and don't dog out the race. And believe it or not, that was during a rehearsal to the point where the movie, uh, that word was only used once in the movie. And also the day of the shoot on the beach, the guys came, about three of the guys came and knocked on my door and said, Tyra, we heard you and we're not gonna use that word in the film. And I have to tell you, I feel that's my greatest contribution to the art 
because you don't hear that word but once. And when Wesley uses the N word, he uses it in a way that it should be used. Okay. Well, powerful stuff. And uh, Tyra, in terms of your own career, have you ever donned our shores here in Ireland? Have you ever got to visit the great Emerald Isle? No, I haven't. No, I haven't at all. Okay. But I love the accent. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the uh, to you. <laughs> and uh, Tyra, Tyra, uh, let's take now a sort of certain twist on white men can't jump. Let's pretend there was an encyclopedia, a sort of dictionary as such. And they did a character synopsis and they went down through each of the characters and they came to your character, Rhonda Dean. And under or underneath her description, maybe the two lines sort of to describe her, they left the blank. And they came across your talent agent, agent and said, we want Tyra Furl uh, to write those two sentences to summarize her character, Rhonda Dean. What would you like those two sentences to read? That she was a loving and supportive wife and mother. Okay. And Tyra Furl? Uh, just in relation to white men can't jump for the final 30 seconds, is there any specific sort of story or so, uh, uh, memory that's unique to you uh, in terms of shooting offset, maybe interaction with the guys that nobody's ever heard about that you would like to share with us a sort of a funny moment, a moment that made you laugh or smile or a good uh, moment between yourself or Woody or Wesley that people haven't heard about? Hmm, what was funny? Um, I remember Glenn Close came on the set because she and Woody used to hang out all the time and she was a really fun person. And when uh, I went to answer the door, it wasn't uh, Rosie, it was Glenn yeah. Close. <laughs> and so that was pretty funny, but it threw me off. I'm so, uh, you know, um, methodical about it, uh, that it threw me off, but that was something funny. She's a, she's a fun and very talented actress. And she was hanging out on the set, having fun with us. So on, that note, <laughs> on that note, Tyra Farrell, an absolute pleasure having you on, on the airwaves this evening. As we look back in 30 years of White Men Can Jump, it's our special feature of Into the Vault uh, movie series. As we know, there's rumors going about that a new movie is in the production in terms of the pipeline 30 years on in terms of White Men Can Jump. But uh, White Men Can Jump, a special feature, March 27, 1992, it aired. It starred Wesley Snipes, Woody Harrelson, Rosie Perez, and our special guest this evening, the one and only Tyra Farrell. Tyra, an absolute pleasure. God bless. Stay safe. Take care. And thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you for asking me. I'm honored. Take care. Thank you. Take care, Tyra. Bye-bye. Sign off. <laughs>